Hi, I'm going to show you how to get anything that paint will stick to, to look like marble. The way we do that is to use some spreader medium and this will help slow the drying time of the paint a little just by the sheer fact that it goes on quite thick. So make sure you do put it on quite thick and and also it stops the colors mixing with each other and you'll see what I mean when we start uh, when we start adding the black over the top. So I'm just using a bit of white here. I'm using the student's white. You could use the Derivan artist white. Um, and I have my sponge, sea sponge, which is a little bit damp so that the, um, the paint doesn't dry in the sponge instantly as you put it in. Now, I'm just letting this mix, and of course it's very hard to see on, with, on a white background, but I'm just letting the, the paint mix in randomly. So I don't want um, a nice even coat. I actually want this, this background that we're putting on now, and I'll, I'll start here, and actually you can possibly see on the blue. Where the white is not mixed in really well and is allowed to mix on the actual piece. So now the background is prepared and while it's still wet, mixing some black with some spreader medium and just gonna lay it down as you can see here using a feather. You can use all sorts of things to, to get this mix of the black and the spreader onto the work. Just remember you're putting it over that wet background. And now I'm softening it. Now the idea of using a dry, soft brush to blend that black into the mottled white background. And you can do this either by stippling or brushing. Now one thing to remember with the veins is that you'll tend to just brush to one side. You tend to have sharp lines on one side of a vein in marble and the other side being a little bit feathered. Now you can soften the uh, blending there by using the sponge as well. Pick up a, a, a little bit of black with the sponge and then once again we'll soften it to blend that black into the white background. Here we'll continue on, adding a little bit more white back in, once again, just to get that variation of color and softening the veins, just to get that sort of marble, marble effect. You can come in with a damp cloth, take off a little bit of color here and there, just to give some variation across the whole piece. And then go back over at the end, whilst the area is still wet and as it's drying, using your dry, soft blending brush and soften in any parts that are a bit harsh. So as you become more experienced in, in doing the marbling, what you might want to do is maybe do half of what we've done here, leave it to dry, put a coat of water-based varnish over the top, and then continue on. Now, the reason you do this is because even though we're only talking fractions of a millimetre difference, putting the varnish on, then another layer of paint, then maybe even another coat of varnish and another layer. Even though we're only talking fractions of a millimetre, it's enough to trick your eyes when you're quite close to it to thinking there's some real depth in that finished piece of marble. And of course, we're, we're used to seeing marble when it's polished, so you definitely need a high gloss finish on it to finish with. But in between coats, sandwich coats, isolation coats, whatever you want to call them, um, to, to build up that physical difference will give you some real depth to your marble. 